There's a key reason why I did so many SIA videos at the start of the year and the simple reason is because there was so much attention drawn towards SIA, especially when the share price came down. SIA was whole day in the newspaper articles. That's why you look at this chart over here, you realize that the volume for SIA actually surged during this downward trend. Now, you know, SI is not like Zoom. They are not a better company because of this pandemic. SI is really suffering. And the reason why so many people are looking to buy into SI is because of this. They are looking to be that guy, that girl, to have bought SI at the rock bottom price. They are looking to be smart. But in all ways, investing is not about looking smart. Investing is knowing about risk. Knowing what risk you can tolerate. And if you don't know about the risk, it's much better to diversify. I'll paraphrase what Warren Buffett has said. Warren Buffett says, why diversification is only required when investors do not understand what they're doing. Now, Warren Buffett has sold out on all his American airline, you know, stake. But Warren Buffett is an astute business person. Most of us, we are normal people. Risk, to him, he has the experience to judge it. For us, we can only see from afar. We don't have the kind of acute business sense that he has. That's why it's much better to be diversified. But in any case, if you're interested about this topic on travel industry, today I'm going to share with you why I'm not big on travel industry. I'm going to break down different segments of travel industry so you know the risk of it and you know in my interpretation what is the place that will recover first with that i'll roll in the intro video hi guys welcome back now let me define travel industry for you a bit so that we have a good basis for discussion and i'll put a few household names the first is sia sia is a premium travel you definitely know them already and they all do international travel because Singapore has no domestic flights. So SI is very big in the first class, business class, international travel, airline. And an alternative player can actually be seen in a cruise liner. And this actually is a share price of Carnival Corporation. You realize that they've recovered back a little bit. Not as bad as SIA's recovery. SIA is lower than before, but Carnival has actually recovered a little bit. Now, what about for hotels? An example that I'd like to show you is actually in CBL Hospitality Trust, which is a REIT. And as you can see, they've actually recovered even more in terms of price itself, which means investors generally view that they have a good chance to being back in the green and stuff. But you know, share price movement is not everything. They do not paint the full picture. Mainly, share price has a lot of you know, uh, association with the, the business operations itself. It's not just the industry dynamics. That's why when we look at this subject of travel industry, we need to look in terms of how governments have been handling COVID-19. And if you look back, how a typical government handles it is the first, they have to halt international travel in, correct? So back in February, that's where we, where governments have actually decided to halt inbound travel. And that's a reason why travel restrictions are the first step to solving this problem once we see a spike coming in. So once we prevent you know, inbound coming in, then the next step is to solve the local problem, correct? And that's where you know, we see news such as this. Melbourne, which is in Australia, is handling a second wave of infection. So it cannot be the other way around. You cannot halt the local and let external come in. It always is. You halt the local, if it's fine, then you allow external in. That's where the relaxation steps comes in. You always relax the local first. Once things are solved, then you allow the external to come in. That's why understanding how governments will react gives you some indication where the easiest or the lowest hanging fruit in terms of recovery will likely come from. And travel industry can be seen in these three breakdowns. Domestic leisure travel, international leisure travel, as well as business travel. Now I'll start with the third one, business travel, because business travel is really the one that I think is suffering. And that's because Zoom meetings, you know, before this pandemic, very few people are using Zoom, including myself. But now I run Zoom meetings daily. Zoom meetings are replacing a lot of face-to-face -face meetings, even for business, business dealings itself. That's why this very interesting statistic, Zoom actually surpassed the market cap of the seven biggest airlines in America. This is actually in May 15, 2020. Their market cap was close to 50 billion, surpassing the combination of seven airlines. Now take a guess, how big is Zoom right now? The number will shock you. They are now 116 billion in terms of market cap. They have increased 230% ever since May 15. The airlines have recovered. They recovered about 75%, but nowhere close. Zoom's market cap in terms of size is even bigger than this difference as of May 2015. So that's a very interesting point. Business travel has now been replaced by Zoom meetings, and that is a very, you know, an unexpected substitute. If we move back now to you know, leisure, leisure travel, international leisure travel. I have this very interesting article. Why it makes sense for Maldives to be Singapore's first leisure travel bubble? You know, very smart. Maldives is made of multiple islands, which means 
each island, if you quarantine it, you can actually create you know, some safe zone between Singaporeans and other country people. So it actually makes a lot of sense. And I believe that's how travel industry will actually be relaxed. We'll of course test travel bubbles very soon in my opinion. But travel bubbles are not the full solution because NBA, NBA is not in the bubble itself. They've invited players to come in, everybody tested negative before they can start competing. And they actually use this bubble to continue you know, the, the normal competition. But what actually happened recently? There's this player, I don't even see this news. Daniel House Jr. He actually managed to smuggle in a female companion into this bubble, unauthorized. And what that means is that, that means it def defeats the purpose of the bubble itself. Because if someone that is positive can come into the, the bubble itself, it could infect everybody and defeats the purpose of the bubble. So bubbles are not a foolproof solution. So the only solution that I can see is definitely in domestic travel, domestic leisure travel. That's why a lot of hotels are actually offering now a discount, a special package for people to come into you know, their hotels to, to, to stay for and get an experience away from home. And that's why the next segment I'll touch on a lot on staycations because I believe that's the first shoot of recovery for travel industry. Now, if you have benefited, smash your like so more people can see valuable content like this and press on the subscribe. Join our family become more financially savvy. Now, as I was mentioning domestic travel, it's the low-hanging fruit that I believe will recover the first. And all the more, if government is supportive, it will definitely recover. So take a look at this. This is actually a news article that came out recently. All adult Singaporeans will get $100 tourism voucher in December to spend on staycations. Now, if you're owner of a hotel, fantastic. Hurry up, create packages because these are so easy money to earn. And government is on board, which means, you know, definitely this industry would survive and revive very quickly. It is a reason why, you know, when I look across studying this industry, I looked at Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky, what he has to say. He's, he's actually mentioned the business has suffered tremendously in this pandemic and they are looking now to revive local experiences, local travel, because that is the easiest, easiest form to recover. International travel might take some time. Business travel might be, you know, forever lost or forever changed. That's why he's doubling down on local experiences and local travel. That could be a reason why, you know, SIA came up with this weird idea. I don't even seen this article also, no. SIA is actually trying to offer flights to nowhere. Now that is crazy. I don't like that idea at all. I know a Taiwanese airline has actually tried that, but to me, that, that doesn't make any sense. That is a novelty project, which means it does not save the business in the long run. I've actually curiously went to look at the article and 75 people actually mentioned that they're willing to pay for flights to nowhere. To me, flights are always you know, a, a tool to get to a new place. I don't enjoy the flight, so I don't understand why 75 people are willing to pay money for flight to nowhere. In addition, 40% mentioned they are willing to pay 588 for business class seat. That again is crazy. 588 is a lot of money. I, I don't understand why we should spend that kind of money. In a lot of ways, flights to nowhere is not the same as cruise to nowhere. You're trying to shape people's experience where they're not used to it. It's like, it's like SMRT, if they have excess capacity, they're, t they're telling you, spend extra money, we give you a, a, a dining cost on our MRT or on our bus. That is crazy because that's not something you expect from a public bus or public MRT. So it does not work. Cruise to nowhere will recover. It is something that people are used to and cruises are so much more spacious and comfortable. That's why cruise liners, are, they are re-operating. I believe cruise may be even earlier in terms of recovery than international airlines. That's just my thought and you know, that's just a simple explanation of how domestic travel is really the low hanging fruit. Now moving past domestic travel, the next part of the equation is international leisure travel as well as business travel. Now I guess you're like me, you're missing a trip to Bangkok, you're missing a trip to Japan, etc, etc. There's a lot of pent up demand. The moment government allows us to travel, we are definitely booking a ticket to fly right away. The pent up demand is real. But for business travel, if you ask 10 people, 9 out of 10 or maybe 10 out of 10 will tell you they're happy they don't need to fly overseas for meetings anymore. So again, Zoom meetings may have changed the dynamics very differently moving forward. And I'm worried if SIA is you know, doubling down on airplanes, good airplanes, good experience on the plane, it may not be the right direction because you know, business travel is shaped differently forever. The only recovery is domestic travel and at some point, international leisure travel recover also. So hopefully SIA realizes that, you know, they need to reshape or they need to redesign their, their categorization very differently moving forward. And I'm not just bashing on SIA, there's a few businesses that may be in trouble. For example, uh, international travel agencies, 
like BCD Travel, like American Express Travel, who manages accounts for SMEs and MNCs, they could also be in trouble because these businesses, they, re they rely a lot on you know, business, having a lot of people moving in and out. And moving forward, if that's not the case, their business might, might suffer permanently also. So these are places where I'm not too keen you know, to invest into. That's why quick conclusions. I believe the assets to look at in terms of travel industry that will recover the fastest are domestic travel. Hotels, you know, in, in Singapore that can tap on domestic travel very easily. And I have a name to suggest for you. And that name is actually in Gunting, Singapore. Take a look at this video over here if you haven't seen it. Gunting, Singapore has an integrated resort, correct? The IR attached to it. It's a very unique proposition. There's no use going to, you know, Changi Village Hotel where there's nothing there. You definitely choose to go to RWS where there's a theme park. There's some different experience. You can bring your kids and stuff along. So I believe Gunting is well positioned to tap not only on international uh, travel, international leisure travel, but they are also well, well positioned to tap on domestic travel. So that video on Gunting might explain a little bit more. And if you haven't seen it, I invite you to that video. With that, I'll sign off. Take care and goodbye.